Hi, welcome. This is private practice for today. Not quite sure what the day is. Oh, it's Tuesday, Tuesday, the 3rd of July. Sorry, just had a complete brain snap. It's been a big day of delivery for me today. So I'm kind of just getting my head around all the bits and pieces that needed to be done by the end of the day. And then I had one of those moments where I've gone, that hasn't been done, that hasn't been done, that hasn't been done, that hasn't been done. So I don't know about you, but they're never fun moments, but they're, they're fairly consistent. Like uh, whoever gets everything done. <laughs> I think that's one of the biggest challenges, but also opportunities about being in business for yourself or having your own private practices. We love the flexibility and the freedom and the fulfillment that comes with doing things our way. But sometimes that means our to-do list becomes exceptionally long. None of us are ever short of ideas, but quite a lot of us are short of the time or the knowledge or the know-how, the resources for the execution. And I was talking about that with a practice building client of mine today who has grown phenomenally in the last couple of months. She's put her head down and she's done what's needed to be done and some of that's been awkward and uncomfortable and really stepping outside of herself. But then some of it has been necessary and some of it has been more than necessary. But what we continue to find is we're asking the question, what is it that I need to do? What is it that I need to do right now? And I think that's a question that we all need to be asking of ourselves regardless of what stage of growth we're in. So it's all well and good to have these ambitious plans and I'm all for ambition. Oh, hello, Miss Ambition sitting over here. But if, to get to the place that you wanna be, you've gotta know where you're at now. And you've got to, you might not know all the steps to get you there, that's okay. To, to be quite honest, the steps often reveal themselves. We can talk about that another day. But you don't need to know the A, the B, the C, the D, all the way through to the Z. Sometimes you just need to know A and Z, and then you take the next step, and it might be A plus, and then you keep working on your way to Z. And there'll be dis disruptions and interruptions that come along the way, and you're forced to acknowledge the fact that you don't know everything. And sometimes we don't even know what we don't know. So I had that conversation with another practice building client today where I started talking about how we use LinkedIn and how we use website and which is particularly relevant for her client group and the cohort of people she wants to work with. And all of a sudden I noticed that she glazed right over. And I'm like, can she not hear me? Because I do most of my overseas calls on Zoom. It has, is there an interruption? Because, you know, telcos here in Australia, we can have interrupted telecommunications at any moment. But what I worked out was that we'd come up against what in coaching is called a boundary condition, where she didn't, she's gotten to the point where she doesn't know what she doesn't know anymore. And she couldn't bluff her way through it because I was quite simply talking about things that she had no knowledge of, which was good for me to be able to read in her face so that I could pull back a bit and go, okay, where did we get up to? What is it that we need to learn now? So she's got a steep learning curve ahead of her, but that's okay if she's not scared of that. And now she knows what she doesn't know, so she can plan for that knowledge. But it got me thinking in preparation for today's live video around how do we learn? Now, not everybody, oh, hey, hey, Scylla, nice to have you here. Ooh, got you thinking, mm -hmm, like the thinking. How do we learn? Now, I know that there are a lot of tools and assessments and instruments out there in the interwebs land and lots of consultants who can assess our learning styles. I get that. And I know that most of us use a model that talks about visual learners or auditory learners or tactile learners or kinesthetic learners or whatever the, the word is. But I want to go a little bit beyond that for ourselves because it's really easy for us, especially as clinicians. We love doing those tests and finding out what label applies to us, even though we hate the labels. We say we hate labels. We really like putting ourselves in categories because then categories tell us how to predict behavior. Well, that's opinion according to Joe. But how, how do we really learn? What does it take for us to learn something? I am not good with overwhelm of information. I'm also not good with group, big group especially. If there is a big room of people with lots of people talking and lots of energy and lots of people at different learning levels, 
I go completely shy and quiet and I will not say anything and I will pretend that I know what's going on. Hey, Kate, lovely to see. Why am I yelling at you? Sorry about that. Hey, Kate, <laughs> just get excited when people turn up. So for me, learning, I need to be intentional about it because I am one of those people who have signed up for all the courses to learn all of the things and never done anything about it. So I know I need someone holding me accountable. I know I need a program in terms of I need this done by this time to execute this thing to go on to the next thing. I also need to learn in a way that has direct implications for what I'm doing right now. This is really important for me. I, I don't need knowledge for the sake of knowledge anymore. I've gone beyond that. I need to know how this thing that I'm learning applies to what I'm doing and how it can make it better. So one of the gifts that I have is helping people with their copywriting and helping them learn how to write copy. Now, I'm not a copywriter, but what I've learned to do is get inside the head and the heart of clients. And then I can teach people how to do that and how to think like a client and think before the client becomes a client. But to learn that, it really had to be an immersive experience. I had to do a lot of it. And I had to constant, I, I even had, had a seat or a desk set up in my office where I went to be the client and actually got, got, almost got myself into character. Actually, that's not lie. I did get myself into character. So for me, learning involves being immersed in new information. Because if I just touch the sides of it over here and then have a week off and then touch the sides of it over there, <laughs> yeah, Kate, I thought you might be somebody who needs to get in and touch it and feel it and play with it and manipulate it. If, if I don't have more of a sensory experience where all my senses are being used and it's in a concentrated period of time, then the learning, for, for, I get bored, get demotivated, and it feels like everything's taking too long you've all just picked my personality behavioral styles haven't you ha <laughs> ha but i think it's so important for us to have this discussion because it's really easy for us to go and buy more coaching over here or another training over there or sign up for this thing here or sign up for that thing there but if we haven't actually asked ourselves how do i learn how am i going to incorporate this learning into my life into my practice into my business into myself don't waste your money or your time or your precious energy so that I had that conversation with somebody the week before I went on leave and it was really clear to me that she's got some learning to do. But she's got absolutely no time to do it at the moment. She needs to get stuff done and she needs to clear up some time out of her week so that she can focus on her learning. And once I helped her understand that if she just invested in more learning, she's going to continue on this cycle of frustration where it's like, but I should know this by now. Well, you haven't actually implemented anything. You actually haven't taken that information and turned it into a learning situation for yourself. Hey, John, um, if you don't do those things, then how can you expect to learn? We're not osmosis learning machines. And most of us as clinicians need to get in there and practice. I, I, I did not learn how to counsel somebody by reading a textbook and writing papers on it. My learning came from actually sitting in front of Firstly, people pretending to be clients, and then secondly, clients, and then having supervision around that. Oh, but that's my supervisor sitting over there, by the way, in case you're wondering what that hand, um, what I was doing there. So I think if, if you don't know how you learn, let's find out. And there's no right or wrong. That's the awesome thing about this. Now, there's lots of theory out there about adult education. I know. I've done training in it. I have an actual qualification in adult education. And can I tell you, whenever, I, whenever I've gone to an adult learning education environment as the trainer, I, if I've ever tried to deliver the training the way I was taught, it's never worked. But when I get to know the learners in the room and can work out pretty quickly in the first 10 minutes how they like to learn and what I'm going to need to do to create a learning experience, then we get some pretty cool stuff happening. Ah, oh, Kate, you're right. EMDR is a great example. That's not something you could learn from a textbook. Having, I don't know how to do it. Sorry, that's me pretending to do EMDR now. But I have used it to process some childhood trauma. It was the best thing. But I seriously would not like it if the therapist sitting in front of me was opening up a book and turning to page two and going, right, now I do this. Yeah, don't do that to me. <laughs> Scylla, I wish I was an osmosis learning machine too. I so do. 
<laughs> it's just like, I'd like to learn how to do that now. I'd like to be able to do that now. I'd like to have all the learning done. And for me, I, I love to teach. And one of the reasons why I'm such a strong coach is because I, I make sure that I'm learning all the time, but I'm also learning with my clients and I'm learning because of my clients. So my clients tend to be really smart. And if I don't keep on my toes about what it is that we're doing, then um, I'm, I don't like feeling like I'm the dumbest person in the room. That does not bless me at all. So the takeaway from this today is very much about asking you to spend some time thinking about how you like to learn. What creates a learning experience for you? And if you've got team members or people around you, whether they're support roles or admin roles or reception roles or other clinicians in your business, how do they like to learn? Because that, as the owner and the leader in the business, we then have a responsibility to help them learn. And one of our key responsibilities for that is ensuring that we're delivering learning in a way that can be most readily received. And I see that Kylie Worry has joined and she's going to sit there going, go Joe. this sounds like all the blog posts I've ever written in my life. Kylie's a bit of an expert in all of this and I'm so grateful that she's a part of my team. Uh, she keeps me on my toes when it comes to how I'm delivering and communicating with my team because my team's pretty cool at that. So I would love to know from you, what are the things about learning that you enjoy? What are the things that make you go, I've got that. I know how to do that now. I've no, hey, Kelsey, woohoo, this is cool. I like it when the West Coast of the USA is still awake. This is very cool. Um, what, what do you enjoy about learning? Because those answers to those questions are going to help you start to um, pull apart the learning experiences that you need to create for yourself. So if you like learning when there's lots of people around because you like listening to other people's questions and you like understanding how people are thinking, then great, add that. If you prefer to be on your own and have one person to help feed back to you your learning, then great, put that down. If you like to be able to read through all the content or watch through, through the content once and then go through it piece by piece, then great, know that about yourself. I swear to you, if you spend some time learning this about yourself, you are about to revolutionize the way you move forward for the next three to six months, if not beyond that in your business. You're going to always be learning. You would not be doing what you're doing if you weren't committed to your own learning. Huh. Well, there we go. This is private practice. It's still Tuesday. And tomorrow is the Purple Co event. So I'm not quite sure how that afternoon is going to wrap up. So if I'm not going to be on, I'll make sure that somebody gets on and lets you know. Um, I would love to be able to share some footage of the event with you tomorrow so you can see how what I do and where I am at and, and share something of what I'm doing as well. Because um, I think that would be fun. I don't often get a chance to share that. So wishing you all a great afternoon, evening, morning wherever you're watching this video. And I know that there's a lot more of you watching than there are commenting because I'm learning that that's what happens here. Have a great evening. I look forward to talking to you again this week.